what do you tell young people, those who want to become, you know, aspire to be well, television journalists? Well, you do the best you can. I mean, I, I, I've talked to young people, and I said to them, uh, I think you go to small stations and try to learn the, the craft as well as you can, but take with you the knowledge that we try to impart from you at the university in terms of ethics and honesty and integrity and critical thinking, how to analyze and check information that's given to you. And uh, they call it investigative journalism, if you will. I think those are important factors. But I think, you know, uh, with all the belly aching about the press, I, I challenge the American people to imagine what it would be like if there was no press. What would it be like? We'd pretty, be pretty damn awful. It would be like a dictatorship. And in some ways, I'm not trying to politicize this interview, but in some ways this administration doesn't understand what democracy is all about. And it's frightening. Uh, I think we really have to worry about this. But it's going to take a different kind of, what, what, regardless of what the party is, whichever political party, there has to be an awakening by the American people. who are going to have to want to insist on accuracy, on honesty, and this begins with honesty. The political process has to be honest, for the journalists to be honest. How would it like to be remembered? Yeah, I mean, what what part of your your life, public life, do you, uh, you feel want to see most recognized? Well, I'm really proud of the um, Reporters Committee. No journalist in this country faced with a subpoena has to pay a legal fee. The committee pays for it. And we've done it for hundreds of journalists. And we fought the institution that would want to subpoena journalists. And my attitude has been, we are not the police for the police. We're not the agents of the government. They want to get that information. There are other ways they can get it. They don't need us for that. And uh, we try to stiffen the, the bones, the resistance, the spine. Of, new, of news organizations that contemplate caving into subpoenas. It's a fight because it's a new generation has changed and it's difficult. Look at, uh, it's gratifying to me when people come to me and say, oh, Murray Fromson, you know, haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> so I stroke my beard, which I don't have, <laughs> and I think about it and people do remember people of our age and our generation. And you like to think that the best you, that whatever you did was the best you could with every honorable intention in your bones. And that's, that's all I can do. I can't do more than that. My, there was a testimony to me uh, last year at uh, USC, which I think you would remember. And my son and daughter, now 45 and 43, had never seen the footage of me in Vietnam. <laughs> they saw it for the first time. And they were absolutely stunned, you know. So, you know, you just have to, you have to hope that maybe the lessons you learned, the experience you had, the vision that you may have accomplished, the vision you may have developed, has some lasting help. I don't know if it does or not. Uh, I think it's a very tough time a lot of my old colleagues who are still around, not in the business now, but are retired, uh, share my view. And we don't mean to sound arrogant. We're not meaning to tell young people that, oh, you're wrong or we're right. That's not the issue. The issue is a lot of these young people are very intelligent. They just have to be shown the way and have been given the spine to say why when things happen. And where's the evidence? And how do you know? And I think there isn't enough of that, not enough of that.